Right, Rocky, we are live. Sit down. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Tag and share. This is another rendition of Uncut on Tuesday night. Tonight, we are talking about happily ever after infidelity. Yes, we are going there. That's why you only see two couples on the screen because everybody else was scared. They were scared. Did nobody else want to come on? I asked people, they said they weren't ready. So here we go. We crickets. Going it was crickets on that post. Yeah, it was crickets on the post. It was crickets when I text people. I inboxed a few people. I talked to some people on the phone. They declined. So I'm yeah. just here so I don't get fined. Exactly. He just follows my lead. So for those who don't know, lips. Right. <laughs> so for those who don't know, I'm Tanisha. This is my husband, Jermaine. We've been married 17, 17 years, October 19th. You show? 17 years. Three children later. Yeah. And um, I'm going to introduce, well, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, the beautiful Rocky and Ben. Tell us who you are, how many kids you got, how long you've been married, and then we'll get right into it. Well, man, it's been a year. This is Rocky and Ben. We've been married 18 years. You're a little low. We can't hear you, Ben. Rocky, you might you might have to talk because we can't hear Ben. Just maybe scoot your computer over a little bit. Hold on, let me. Yep, we hear you. Yeah, you're crystal clear. It's just Ben. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, because we're the, in here together. I yeah. know. Oh, yeah. oh speak Hello. up. He, with his very white voice. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's muffled. muffled. It's, it's just muffled, muffled. But it's just being. It's crazy. That's weird. That's strange. Yeah, it is. Would you move, Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> that thing was in the way. Oh, you know what? I had it on this mouse pad. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. you you was blocking his flow. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hello? You're okay. good. All right. My name is Ben Harris. This is Rock. Kel Harris, we've been married 18 years. We have a daughter, Sydney, son, Dylan, daughter, 17, son, nine. <laughs> All right. So tell, uh, y'all ready? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even see it. <laughs> you, <laughs> I didn't even nothing. see it. I didn't nothing. Even see it. Not, nothing. Contraband. So we'll so so Rocky and Ben, I'll start with a question for y'all first and then I'll bounce it to us. So, like when was the affair? Like how long ago and who was the person who stepped out? Well, I'm gonna let her speak. Yeah, it was me. Unfortunately, I was the one who stepped out. It was Rocky. It's, it's doing it again. It's got to be something in front of Ben because it's only Ben that's getting muffled with the sound. Here, let me scooch it over to him. How's oh, okay. that? Yeah, that's that better. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was the culprit. Uh, it's around 2011, and um, yeah, I was the one who had stepped out. Yeah. Okay. Rocky, you ever stepped out? No. Okay. Not yet. You Rocky. <laughs> Act right. Sure. I mean, we don't know what the future holds. I, oh, I don't you, know. Know. you know what your future holds. You, you know. Don't speak. Don't even speak it into existence. No, I don't I don't play it. <laughs> right. I don't uh, yeah, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Huh? Oh my God. <laughs> uh no, let me stop don't you, be, uh, don't, don't you beat up on Ben. That was 2011. It is 2020. We are healed yes, and set yes. free. We are over it. <laughs> yes, we, we are still healing, actually. We are still healing. Amen. Actually. We are still healing. Um, but um, no, I don't, I don't, um, I don't anticipate doing that. And no, I have not. Okay. Uh, I have not been with anyone uh intimately except him for the past uh what's 21 years? 1999. This is 99. So okay, okay. Now have I flirted? Yes. Okay. But have I um have I acted on the flirtation? No. Okay. 
And so we'll talk a bit about that too, because some people look at flirting as worse than the physical act. So worse? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nobody that yeah. think that. Yeah. That's, you know, it's a matter of semantics. Just sometimes. Sometimes. Just because you, don't, just you don't know them, don't mean it ain't happening. I don't know. If, I don't know if I would say that as Jesus. worse, but uh, okay, you know. Right. So, in our situation, I was the first. I was the person who stepped out initially. Let me say that. So I was the person who stepped out. Um, it was a weekend away, but before that weekend away, there was a breakdown in communication. There was a breakdown in communication for like weeks to the point where I'm sleeping in the bedroom, he's sleeping on the couch. I had a bad back. Don't over talk me. He he didn't have a bad back. He didn't want to sleep in the bed. You know how you see the cover of Marriage Uncut and it's them scissors going mm -hmm. down the middle. Yeah, that's yep. how we used, that's how we used to sleep in the bed. Like, don't cross this imaginary line. Yep. Don't touch me. Don't let your foot touch my foot. Yeah. Oh. Yes. I just want to say right quick with uh, the topic of the session. Wait, and, say that again, Ben. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. You might I, I'm that. I'm just gonna talk loud and stuff. Yeah. With this with this topic that we're talking about now. Let's leave scissors out of the equation. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, no scissors. No scissors, Rocky. <laughs> Lorena, um, don't, don't be Lorena. I don't know where I won't take it that far. Right, no, it, it won't go what that far. What fun will you have after that, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it won't go that far. But the point is, there was already like a breakdown in communication where we hadn't been talking for weeks. So there was that gap where you pretty much are vulnerable. Both spouses are vulnerable. So you want you want to add something there, or you just gonna you say keep it? going? You keep going. Why? Why are you just you can't I'm, just I'm, sit I'm, on the I'm, Zoom I'm and be when it's time. Okay, well, eventually somebody else decided that they wanted to retaliate. Six months later, mm. yeah. So mm. as look at Ben, <laughs> Ben, I didn't have, I didn't have it in me. I don't know. I just, I never felt like that would give me, um, it was like, even when I was single, I did not date more than one guy at a time. Mm -hmm. That just was never my style. Um, and of course I have had those thoughts like, oh, let me get back at him. But I just have not felt like to bring myself to go there. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't want the confusion. And I just know that's just not going to make me feel better. Right. It's just not going to make me feel better. And I know it's not going to solve the situation. So um, just for me, I just didn't see it as an avenue. Mm -hmm. So to um, even. or to feel like you're getting even. Right. But it's been other things that I've done to get even. OK, but but are you really getting even? Like, are you really hurting? Ben? Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. And that's what I've learned through the healing that sometimes doing like passive aggressive things or punishing him in other ways has been counterproductive. Mm -hmm. um, but at times it has given me satisfaction to watch him squirm because I'm like, you should pay for what you did. I'm, I'm still pissed or, you know, or it, it's still a sore spot. Um, and that's why I say we're healing. We're in a much better space now. Uh, but, uh, you know, for several years, we were not in a good space. And so now I'm at the point, you know how they say um, you are healed when you can talk about it without crying? Yep. So that's the point I'm at now where I can discuss it where I don't like want to well, well up in tears and or fight. punch him in the face or, mm -hmm. or Lorena Bob at him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but, we can have more said, conversations about now. Yeah. But you said, but you said something key, Rocky. You said you need to pay for what you did. At what point do you say that? Like, who decides how much he can pay for what he did? Because in my situation, it's reverse. Like, I wanted grace and mercy, and I, I, I wanted that grace and mercy like immediately. Like, I understand you feel like I should pay for what I did, but how long? Because we went through that too, where it was like, no, I think I want a divorce. No, we're going to stay together. No, I think we should separate. And I was like, listen, I'm not about to do this yo-yo thing with you. I understand what I did, but we either in it and we in it, or we, we just about to close this door and I'm right, going to pay yeah. for my consequences. 
Let's be yeah, clear. Yeah, Ben, ben has said that to me. Like that. No, wait, no, don't over talk me. I'm so, not over talking you, but don't so, act like you came off like that. You didn't. Okay, I might not have came off like that. Humble she was. So, and, right. and see, that was part of my issue, Jermaine. At times, Ben was not humble about it. Exactly. So that's what upset me because it's times he would act like. Well, you know, it's no big deal. Let's keep it moving. And I'm like, no, nah, bruh. That's exactly I, And I guess it. for me, it was partly also because I had not, I had acted like I was okay when I wasn't. And I had to be honest with him to say, I'm still hurting. I'm still healing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, 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 and so and that's, the, yeah. Like you said, and that's to this day. And and even now, that's like now, like it, 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 it catch me off guard and, and it kind of, some kind of rise up when, like you don't see it's, it's I don't I don't need you to be guilty I just want the remorse I want you to feel ashamed not even really ashamed but just understand what you did was wrong but when you just trying to you like screw past it like it wasn't that big of a deal get over it and to be fair that's how it was initially because yeah. he has since then exhibited that remorse I'm sorry mm -hmm. go ahead because I, I do want to be clear that it's it's not yeah, still like that yeah. in the beginning it was like that I, I mean I this is a real conversation. Of course, yeah. I felt like shit when I did it, and I mm -hmm. feel like shit when I think about it now. But right. you know, it's just. And then I mean, I I've shared emo moments with her. I didn't cry buckets of tears with her. And I recent and she recently had a show uh, with her friend Tiange Cooper. If she's watching now, hey Tiange yeah. Cooper, how you doing? And um, I was. I had made a statement where I said, you know, when I did it, the older I got over time, when you think back on it, you reflect, it's like, I felt like I hurt myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It, it's not like I just hurt her. It felt like I hurt me. Right. And then when you, when you put things in a different perspective, a lot of times you'll think differently, you'll react differently. Because when you're thinking on a selfish tip, you know, you're thinking you could do whatever. But if you're actually thinking about other people and you're actually hurting people you love, mm -hmm. you know, that's something, you know, hey, when you really say you love somebody, I mean, that that go to the core, that go to the soul. And to really say it, you hurt someone you love, you know, hey, you know, I, I mean, I love Raquel. I do. She has been the best woman I've met in my life for me. Who is, I mean, like I said, I mean, she... Besides my, yes, of course, that RIP I was saying. But um, like I said, I, I felt like shit when I heard her. So, you know, it's just, and you say there wasn't a humility. I mean, I I would like to think I just wasn't like around, like, oh yeah, I did this shit here, yeah, look at me. Oh, right, I, right. <laughs> I, I wasn't like that. Man. It, it wasn't like that, but I think for me, um, I don't know. I guess I, I... It's one of those you situations. You want me to be more of a more, like they said. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, yeah. Remorseful. I mean, but it, and it's not like you weren't. It was just, it would it would um, vacillate. Like, sometimes he would be humble, and then other times he would get cocky about it. And, but it's like, we. it was like this kind of confusion from both of us, because I was acting like I was healing, and it was like a couple years later, and it's like, no, I'm still upset. And, and even now... I mean, it's not, it doesn't come up as much, but when we do have the conversation, it's more of an introspective thing. Like, okay, when that happened to us, this is how I felt. And this is where I'm at with it now. And this is what I'm hoping for the future. So it's, it's been like phases, so to speak. And it's, it's one of those situations where you always say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But then when you get in a situation, you don't know what you're going to do. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Because in that moment when I found out, it was like the the, the universe shifted to me mm -hmm. because it was like a one one of the biggest fears came true, right? You know, mm -hmm. when you get married, that's one of your biggest fears. Are we gonna get divorced? Are we gonna this and that? And um I wanted to kill the stigmas of what my mother had taught me that all men cheat, that mm -hmm. da, da da da. And I'm like, damn, now you just like everybody else. So it was kind of a letdown because I always looked at him as someone different. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's just been phases for us. Now I'm in a better place with it where I can discuss it on public forums like this. And that's part of what has healed me to yeah. be public about it and speak about it. And I thank him for at times 
dealing with me when I've written articles about it and I've talked about it. And he hasn't come and said, oh, you shouldn't be talking about it. I don't want people to know. And I've never, I appreciate- never done that. I've never done that because I know the kind of person she is. You know, she can't, she, I don't know sayings or whatever, but she can't hold bad feelings in. It has to right. be, it has to be released. And right. I mean, that's her personality. And I, and I've never, I, I like I always think I've never been that, that jealous type of guy. Cause I mean, like she said, she told me the other day, a dude flirting with her at Dylan's football practice. Now I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, well, you know, hey, yeah. what do you say to you? Hey, you hey what do you say? What do you, what do you say to you? Give me them nachos. Girl. Yeah, because I was in some nachos. He's like, give me some of those. Give me some of your nachos. Hey, nigga, what? Is that flirting? He's hungry. <laughs> no. Well, no, you know how to get on nachos. <laughs> men, men know when another dude flirting. I'm like, it yeah. ain't no nachos. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. And no, yeah. you were there. You were standing there. You didn't realize we were all standing. Yeah. We were standing. <laughs> We were all standing near each other, but see, they didn't know that Ben and I, this guy didn't know that Ben and I are married. We're together, yeah. Because mm -hmm. he was one of the other fans, or what is it called, um, attendees you of the game. I was in the area? Yes. Yeah. You, you, because I was standing closer, we were all kind of just standing around discussing what was happening, because it was some drama happening with the game. And we were all standing in kind of a wow. semi-circle okay. discussing it. And I was closer to the guy than I was to Ben. Oh, this old slick ass. ass nigga. I'm right wait, wait, uh, wait, no. I don't think he knew. I don't think he knew that we were together, though. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, or did. maybe he did. I don't know. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> okay. The, the, but still, the point is, as I was joking to him, there are always people circling. Both of us, I know. Well, it's well. Let's be clear. It's always people circling everywhere, like it on both ends. It's not just one sided. Yeah, so, and that's I, what I told him. I said I know they be circling you too. Right, when I'm not right. around. So and, and, right, and, and unless he acts on it, you're not going to know. So, that's so, and that's my point. And so, that's my point. Like we all have temptation. Oh, and you, yeah, and, yeah. and that's what I told him. Like you. So you wanted to give her some of your nachos. <laughs> No, Ben, no. cut it with the nacho. Cut the nacho. Let's Please. let's be clear. Now I have had temptations, but he's not one of them. And and oh, I, as, I, as, as I as I've explained to him, let me know with me being in media with the events that I've covered, I've definitely had opportunities. Okay. Yeah, Ice Cube, Ice Cube could have shot a shot. But the, but but he, he, he don't even have to necessarily be a celebrity. It could be anyone that I might encounter that I might find attractive. Yeah, no, no it doesn't have we to all be have temptation. Yeah, I mean, Tim, everybody has temptation. Nobody is exempt from that. The problem becomes when you start acting on that temptation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, going back. And that's why I don't see an issue with, I mean, flirting, I guess, I guess, I guess it depends on the degree you go to. Okay. For but, me. But, but here's my thing with flirting, Rocky. Flirting is probably what led me to the affair. It's, so you saying it's just flirting. But flirting led up to the affair. So for some people, they yeah. gonna follow that flirting down the rabbit hole, and they gonna fall right into the hole. Yeah. So it can start off as flirting, innocently, like we think, okay, some nachos, and that could have went a totally different direction. Yeah. So yeah, I, but that that the nacho guy was a yeah, nacho. He wanted more than some nachos. We, we we off we off the nacho guy. Back to my original question, Rocky. Oh yeah. At what point do you decide enough is enough, and I'm at a point in my life where I'm not I'm trying to make you pay. Well, no, I think I think I've reached that point though, where I'm not because I already I now with maturity I realize that it's ultimately up to God to handle it and not up but to what, me. But what what so, was what, what was your process to get to the point of? I can't pay him back for what he's done. Like, just, what was just, the process just, like? I mean, just us, me. Did I mean, just praying it? over it. Yeah, but but just okay. me praying over it a lot too, because okay. I pray a lot for God to take the resentment and anger and hate out of my heart. Mm -hmm. I pray, and just 
him just seeing the maturity of him responding to me, following his lead of him being like, okay, I'm remorseful, showing that he can be trusted, mm -hmm. you know, reassuring me. Um, and not that he had to do a lot of extra because he was always dependable. You know, he was always someone who I could trust. If he said what he was going to do, he was going to do. That's what why it was so shocking when he did, because it's like I, I depended and trusted him and I still do. Mm -hmm. But I just had to get to a point where I was tired of being upset about it and tired of trying to pay him back and just doing little stupid shit that was just eventually going to turn into a bigger argument where really I'm upset about this. Right. And him saying to me, like, look, when, when are you going to be over it? When are you going to be? Well, he didn't say when you're going to be over it, but he was like, look, if you want me to leave, just let me know. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you don't want to be with me, either you're going to forgive me or, or not. Mm -hmm. And that was in the midst of us having an argument that wasn't related to that. You know how you argue about something else that's not related to the root issue. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You arguing about some other BS. I used to passive aggressive. Right. Passive. Right. So I just, I just got to the point where I prayed about it a lot. I wrote in my journal a lot. Um, drank a lot of wine. Mm -hmm. Talked uh, talk to my girls about it. Did things like this talking about it on my show, yeah. writing articles about it. It's just like I had to, I had to cleanse it. And I'm still in that, in that mode, but I'm way further than what I was. Now I'm like, you know, I can't stop. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I had so, to learn more to focus on bettering me. Right. So I want to, instead of, people. yeah. Right. So I want, you got something to say? And now I'm going to jump to me. About what? About anything. Are you going to chime in or are you just going to... You, you, you ain't asking me no You could have watched from Facebook. I'm going to talk to Ben. Ben. <laughs> you told him don't over talk you? Ben. Ben. I'm going to talk. He's on the same man. He ain't got nothing to say. He's on the same man. Ben. Nope. <laughs> ben. <laughs> All right. Ben. Because I already, I already know his answer to this question. Because we, we... Okay. Well, I'll ask you the question. Did you see... <laughs> I'll ask you and Rocky, then we'll go to bed. Did you see the signs leading up to it? Or was it like, poof, this is out of thin air. Like, I just never thought this would happen. Um, No, not you, Rocky. Jermaine. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Respond. Absolutely. I thought it would never happen. No, I'm saying, did you see the signs leading up to, like, what signs no. led up to it? Okay. I didn't. Okay. Absolutely not. Don't get me wrong. Now, now hindsight is always twenty twenty. Exactly. Yes. But leading absolutely. up to it, absolutely. If if I saw the no. signs leading up to it, do you actually think I would have reacted the same? No, no. I'm right. saying, looking back on it, what I signs? know what you're saying. I'm just telling you, no. Okay. When you look back, you can say, oh, okay, yeah. But leading up to it, no. My my question is for the people who are watching: What signs, looking back now? led up to that point I, I mean i think you covered it already i think it was it was the the communication the lack of communication and i mean you you think about it now and when you're not communicating of course you know the enemy can come in and you know and do a little subliminal attacks on both of you you know one telling you one thing telling her another you know of course you i mean you 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 see that now but again we all get so comfortable in our skin and where we at where we you think it can't happen to me you know, I, like I got, I was like, okay, yeah, I know we dealing with problems, but and, w and one of the worst things in the world that can happen is the fact that you do have, you know, repetitive arguments or you you fighting and, and, and arguing all the time, and then you fight and argue all the time, and then you always come back. So that's actually one of the worst things that can happen because you get comfortable doing that. You get comfortable mm -hmm. with that, thinking, okay, this is the norm. Right. Right? And so you we're not we, thinking we, about we them finna step out because we just did this last week and that happened. Then, you know, we get together the other night and we, you know, knock it off and hey, we good. So, no, I so, but yeah, hindsight, of course. Yeah, and hindsight. Yeah, I mean, hindsight, of course. I'm, yeah. And, and I'm not <laughs> saying that for us, I'm saying that for people watching. The whole point is somebody may be in a situation and again, we choose to ignore the signs because, like you said, yeah. we think it's good yeah. or we've been arguing or I've been saying I want a divorce for five years. What makes it different now? Eventually, all of that stuff is seed leading up to it. So my point is, what were the signs leading up to that? Not that we can go well, back and I, change yeah. it. Well, I I mean, um, I, again, I, I have to go with what Jermaine is saying about the hindsight because we were not mature in our marriage then. 
Okay. So I was pretty much at that point, we were in the rhythm of things. It was, we were caught up in the business of life. Okay. So it's not like it was, it, to me, I didn't see any excessive arguing. Um, and cause like you said, Jermaine, we, we've always had a pretty, um, aggressive relationship where we are going to bump heads. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause we both are like alpha personalities. So yes, now I look back on it and look at the areas that were neglected that led to that. Mm-hmm. But I also still felt like, even though those areas were neglected, I, that's what was part of my anger with him. Cause it's like, yeah, I, you felt neglected, but I felt neglected too, but I didn't cheat. Right, right. And that was, that was my point. Like you weren't the perfect husband either. I wasn't the perfect wife, but mm-hmm. I didn't seek what I was missing from you from someone else. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the biggest thing with me too, because that was the exact same thing. She started, she talked about the trip that she took um, her weekend trip, but literally before her weekend trip, I gave her a sort of automate, uh, automatum to say, Hey, while you go and think about this marriage and if this is what you want, because to me, that was me saying, Hey, I could go out and do it now, but I'm giving you the chance to speak up and say it before I do. And you just go and went out and did it. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, hindsight. And, and I, but that's anything, but I, again, I think that's anything. And I think the, the, the key is when you see any issue, address it quickly. Because right, but that's what Bear's boot camp taught us, right? That, but that, we, who, who taught it, us don't that? Don't let it linger or fester. Right, there you go. Who taught us that though? That's something I didn't learn Yep. Um, you know, because coming, I saw my grandparents and stuff, but I never like they never discussed the dynamics of marriage. I didn't um I knew from seeing what a woman's role was, but I didn't really understand how you have to communicate and have those hard conversations and sit yeah. down and say, This is what I need from you. What do you or or ask me, what do you need from me? Because that's mm-hmm. something I've learned to do now to check in to say, okay, are we good? Do we need to discuss right. this? Mm-hmm. Right. What's happening? And just trying to be trying to be proactive about it. So you don't realize, and I and I never was like, oh, that'll never happen to me. I was just like, oh, I hope it never happens. That mm-hmm. was my thought because I had always been, I was raised by a single mom. And I come from a society and culture of where men cheating is accepted. It's okay. And I had always told him like, well, you know, that's not something that I'm down with. You know, he he knew that I was who I was. Mm -hmm. So um, can I look back and say, I, I understand why it happened? Yeah, because we were in some dark places that we didn't realize, you know, how far we had sunk. You know, until we got to marriage boot camp and look back on some of the stuff and shit that we have been through and said to each other and the way we treated each other. Right. And just, you know, as time went on and different things happened, you know, just the longer you're married, married, it matures you. You, Mm -hmm. you, you, you have situations that you didn't think you were going to be in. And it's easy to say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But then when it comes to that point, you might not be ready to do that. Right. And, I, and I'll, I'll say the same thing, like you said, because even when we got went through it and we got past it, we still would fall into those same pitfalls again, which is what led us to marriage boot camp. Because we that happened what in 2011, and we didn't do boot, marriage boot camp to 2013. What two three years later? See, so, we did it right after. Yeah, yeah, we were and right so after. It, we, yeah. And, and when we did it, we were we we I think we had already been separated. So. We had separated. We we got over that. Got separated. Never, not really separated. She went and got out of place, but she never. He really put separated. me out. He, he put me out, and it was all over the church that he put me out. <laughs> he said, "Don't don't over talk me." Don't he over-talk set me, me out. Don't over talk me. Stop over talking me. But see, we didn't even get to that point. <laughs> but 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 like what you were saying though is until we learned what to do because you can get past it. And still keep doing the same thing because we got past it and we will still go through spells of, of, of no communication. So until I say until you know, and there could be because I think you you said something key earlier, Rocky, watching your parents and your grandparents argue, you, that's your norm. So you think that's what married people do, right? They argue. So if they argue and say together, what this is normal. 
So Ben, Ben, I just want to Right, ask, and that's something that he saw too. Yeah, I just want to ask Ben going into it, what signs you feel like you saw leading up to it, looking back? When it made me do what I did? Yeah. I was in a very dark place. What did that was, look, what did that look like for the people watching who don't know what that means? Uh, my mama was dying. Uh, I basically met Raquel and I, like she said, we're, we're both very strong will. And there'll be times in earlier in our relationship where the arguments would be ridiculous. I mean, just pointless. It's on, I mean, it's on, on some levels. And I had uh, left my job but um, I went back to school. But there were different ebbs and flows financially mm -hmm. with us. And those ebbs and flows financially that happen cause ebbs and flows. <laughs> yeah. Those in our relationship. So, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and you know, at certain times I got frustrated. I got very frustrated and she got frustrated too for her own reasons. But I mean, there was so much I was trying to do. I mean, I, I, I got my degree. I got my degree in 2009. And then by 2012, my, my mother dies. My son is born in 2011. And my father dies in 13. I have a stroke in 14. It was just like that five year span, I was doing so much. And I felt like, you know, it's just so much going on in my life that I feel like I was kind of not in control or losing control. And at times when I would, you know, just wanna, you know, just, you know, hey, Raquel and I kicked it. We, we didn't kick it, we didn't party all our relationship. We didn't, we had fun. I mean, if it wasn't for 2020, we be gigging every weekend like we <laughs> usually do over somebody house or somebody be over here. But at times that will wear on me because I'm a friendly guy. I like having fun. I do. But this child likes to have it more than I do. She what do. Up to that though. But I'm just, it, these, I'm just saying these, these are certain things in the relationship that rub me a certain way it mm -hmm. times i wanted more peace she didn't want to have that like her sister circle please don't get me started on them motherfuckers anyway uh uh basically her friends <laughs> can you hear me yes <laughs> Our friend, hear you. Our church, friend. The church folk can hear you too. Good. Hear me, church folk. Yeah. Hear me. <laughs> For real. Hey, because this is unfiltered and uncensored. Oh, uh, um, Uncut. It, it was just that her friends would be over at my house to like four o'clock in the morning, like twice a month. Uh for for like it seemed like several years. And then a few of her friends. No, no, I am not exaggerating. No, I'm not. No, I'm not exaggerating. What? Hold on, Rocky. Hold on. Hold on. Let him finish. Okay. Hold on. Go this ahead. This was man. beyond 2011. This Go just ahead. stopped. Like... But she's asking you. Oh, wait. Really? Okay. 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 It's, it's just basically me and Raquel at certain times were not on the same page. If I want to make it short to the point, we were not on the same page. And and like I said, I she's oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> Wanna to get to a, a, a root cause of a lot of stuff. Her mom was a single mom. My dad was a pimp. So, you know, there I right by Raquel bringing me to the church and the education that, that I didn't have later earlier in my life. Yep it kind of made me want to do better mm -hmm. and be better. I mean, hey, I, I'm a man. Hey, like I said, I, I messed up. I messed up. I did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from those mess ups, for my father to have been is, in my mind, such a negative role model, I use that negative role model and flip it, try to flip it 
into a positive role model for me. But there's just certain things that, like I said, I mean, I, I was wrong what I did, and I'm sorry for what I did. But there was just certain time. What, what led up to it was it was just a, a lot going on. There's just so much going on in my life at that time. Like I said, I mean, and my mom's dying. Now, my mom was my best friend. You know, my, my really, she she was. She, she's my best friend. I don't, I don't care to say that either. And it's sad to say because a lot of my homies out here coming up, they didn't fail by the wayside. But my mama, whatever I needed, anything, anything in this world, I went to her. And she gave, she provided, and if she couldn't give or provide, she at least had the good word and the good um, knowledge to give me. Mm -hmm. When she died, that fucked me up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just... But she was sick leading up to that, though. It was like... She was <laughs> yeah, some things, hey, you know, like you said, some things is hard to get over. That's one of them things, hey, who really does get over that? Right. Mm -hmm. Losing your mom. Who, who really does? But in all honesty, from, from I love my mother, but they were a part of my life, and especially with my dad. I'm glad they're gone. That that might sound terrible, but I'm more at peace. And I feel like I can move on with the rest of my life mm. and raise my kids and raise them how I want to raise them and have that memory of them, honestly, be with me, but fade away. Because like I said, a lot of, a lot of things I've seen from my dad, I don't even want to share on Zoom with y'all right now because it's 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 scurrilous, it's scandalous. And yeah. I seen it. I was right there. I was right there being a part of it. Wow. And that affected me, it molded me, and it showed me in a lot of ways. I, I didn't I didn't respect women for years. Mm. I, I didn't. It just I, I just didn't. I went uh, women to me was like it, it, it was like gold, like jewelry. Mm. But like Jordans, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's something fresh, something new, and hey, when they get old, get something new. But that's when I was younger. Raquel showed me something different, something new. My homeboy was a church going, a guy himself, Steve Johnson. If you happen to be watching this, Steve Johnson, I hope you are. But my, my man, Steve Johnson, introduced me to Raquel, mm. and he, was, he took me to church with him years ago and, and it profoundly affected me and from that moment on i started moving wanting to move closer to god raquel her being god fearing her whole family god fearing and i i felt like it was something i needed in my life when i found her and i actually met her like 10 years before my parents passed so you know I mean, like I said, like she knew both my parents. She loved my mama, and you know, she knew my dad. But uh, like I said, in, in a lot of ways, I'm glad they're at peace because now I feel like I can move on with the rest of my life, and that's kind of how I'm trying to graduate from my mother's death. But I still tear up. <laughs> like a certain song will come on. Mother's Day will happen. If she knows this, I'll be watching. I, I cry like a baby when I watch the TV. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, it's certain something, some uh, certain commercials will come on. We have some sad, sad, beautiful music. <laughs> and you, you just hear it. You, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, it is what it is. But I said she, for the mess up that I had, it's like. You know, I like I said, I, I hurt her, and like I said, it felt like I hurt myself. And I've always prided myself on trying to improve mm -hmm. in everything I do, in everything I do, improve, get better. So, hey, uh, why can't I be a better man, a better husband? Why, why can't I do that? And we all make mistakes, we all fuck up, but if you don't learn from them, Then, then that's the pattern of stupidity. And we all know the difference between stupidity and ignorance. Ignorance, you get a pass because you didn't know. Stupidity is you knew and you still keep doing it. So, yeah, you know. Yeah.
So what was yeah. she doing to the day? Well, I don't forgot the question. <laughs> well, she was the, the original question was what were the signs leading up? <laughs> too much, too much, too much in my life. Too much in my life was going on. You, Raquel, I, I said that. I said that. I said that I was being greedy and selfish. Is what? But what happens when you spiral? What happens when you're going down the drain? You start reaching and trying to save yourself. And I, I was, like I said, I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, exactly. I, I I lost a lot, but I gained a lot, and I I was. trying to understand what's going on in my life. But, you know, like I said, in, in doing all that, I hurt the woman yeah, I love and yeah, unlearned it. Oh man, unlearned. I'm the master of the I'm the master of the unlearned. Y'all just heard what I said about my dad. Right. right. <laughs> I ain't I ain't got no stable. <laughs> I ain't got no homes. <laughs> Learning patterns of communication yeah. from yeah. Yeah. From our families and how to be married. Like we're still unlearning those things. Well, well, and let's be clear. I I don't feel like we, we learned what not to do from our families. Let's be clear. Yeah. I, yeah, I you have to, especially yeah. if it was bad. Yeah. I mean, because I said we came, I came up during the what? I mean, we all did. We all from that era. The crack epidemic, the yeah. AIDS epidemic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That the eighties was real, the nineties was real. Right. So I mean. For everything that we going through now, I look back at them. Days like these kids today is some punks. <laughs> <Flat out. laughs> but you know it is what it is. We have been through a whole. It is, I mean, these, sit down. <laughs> hey, right. We didn't been. We didn't. What? Would you? How many epidemic pandemics we didn't been through? Right. About three or four. H1, <laughs> yeah. N1, AIDS, all that. Right. Oh, that is what it was. We couldn't go outside because my mom was at work. I was quarantined growing up. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That was quarantine. I had no ass in with a few nights come on. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but, right. It. but those were the things that pretty much, the, like around that era, around that time, those those few years, there was just so much going on. And I said I was spiraling and I reached out to I reached out to someone just out of greed. Right. Yeah, literally just out of greed. I mean, it's no emotions, no I didn't feel like, you know, I I love this woman. I didn't. I it was it was just greed. It was just greed. And like I said, it like I say, you, I basically learned a lot about myself over this time, too, is that can't keep blaming people in the past for shit I'm doing. I'm the one messing up. I'm the one doing these things. So I can't keep blaming my dad because he was a certain way and I learned from him and, and this, that, the other. I mean, I don't have to do it. And one thing I, I believe with every human being in this world, we all have a choice yeah. in any matter. And anything we doing, you say, no, nah, I'm straight. No, nah, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do that. No, nah. but a lot of times, you know, hey, you know, drugs influence things. And, you know, hey, alcohol, liquor, it, that, that can get a hold. But, you know, I got to tell her times too, I tried to control that at times. Like, I, I don't have to drink all the time. I mean, you've seen, I've been at many occasions with her where I'm just chilling because. I have a certain goal I'm trying to achieve, so I, I need to drop clean, you feel me? <laughs> okay. I need to drop clean. I, I got a square. I got, I got a square. You know, I mean, when I did, it was several times. It wasn't just before. There was several other times before that. So, you know, like I said, you know, it, it, there, there are things that influence. And, you know, to clear your mind, the more you won't make certain decisions. True. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, a sound mind makes sound decisions. What were you going to ask me? I'm going to ask you to answer the question. Babe, I keep forgetting the question because it's The question right is, here. what did you see, the signs that you saw leading up to oh, so, that caused you to do what you did, what yeah. you done? So I'll say some of the signs where we probably, we went 10 years saying I want a divorce or I'm done or it's over. 
I mean, just festering those seeds out of our mouth, like we should do something different. Like for the first few years, he would tell me, you're not happy. And at the end of the day, I wasn't happy. But let me be honest, that had nothing to do with him. That had everything to do with me. Like Ben said, based on how you grew up, I'm miserable and you think you miserable in the marriage. No, you miserable with self. So now you start self-sabotaging the marriage. So some of the signs were our communication. It was, you know, people think they communicating because they yelling and screaming. That don't mean you communicating. You yelling and screaming. That's not effective communication. That's not, that's not effective communication. Right. Because ain't nobody listening and people get mad and they pissed. Then you don't talk for two weeks. So that's not effective. The other thing was, I think over time, like I said, for so many years, that was always our out. Like divorce was always an option. It was always, I'm leaving, or it was always, I'm done. I don't have to do this no more. We can go our separate ways. Let's split these bank accounts. Let's split these kids. We can do all of this separately and just parent these kids and go on with life. So I feel like, like you said, Rocky, marriage will mature you if you let it, if you stay in it long enough to mature you. But also, like Ben said, it's a mindset. So the clearer your mind is and the more mature your mind is, Again, if your mindset is, oh, well, I can just bounce any day, then you leave that door open for you to bounce any day. Yeah. So yeah. You, you leave divorce as an option. And so many people, like you said, Rocky, they'll say, oh, if you ever cheat on me, I'm out. I'm done. Rocky, do you know the month before I fell into the affair, I was dogging this girl at our church on the praise team who had cheated on her husband multiple times. Like, oh, he should leave her. He should just go like he a good man. She keep cheating on him, yada, yada, yada. And then that yep. same finger was yep. back at me. Yep. So, so we point one finger at somebody else, but it's no, just this is, yep. point back at us and we yep. don't see that. Judging, right. Yeah. Yep. So it's so Remember easy to say. Yeah, it's so easy to say what you would and would not do until you That's get very, it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Judging. Yeah, you judging. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I used to be the same gossiping about her husband that cheated. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's three on one. That's three on one too. And, and, and exactly what the lesson for me is mind your damn business. Mind your damn business. Keep on your situation. But you be putting business out there too. My own business. You be but, letting people know. But 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 no, going back to like y'all said, the, the problem is this with the whole mind your own business or what happens in this house stays in this house. So we we right. gotta keep all this stuff a secret and then nobody's healing because we keeping it a secret. Oh, I mean to a certain extent. But I, okay, but I, my, my question then is for what you're saying is okay, always constantly saying, are we getting divorced, we're getting divorced, we can split these kids, whatever. So when you cheat, was it the intent to get divorced? Because I think, because I, I, I don't, I don't think that's the case with a lot of people. A lot of people don't cheat saying that I'm gonna cheat so I can get divorced. They cheat just to do it, and with the expectation that they just gonna come back together with, you know, like. I don't nothing. think he thought it was gonna be found out. No. I don't think he thought it was gonna be found out. No, like my, like my initial thought was, my marriage is over anyway. What do I have to lose? There's nothing to this. So what do I have to lose? Period. Until the morning after when I woke up and I had a clear conscience, the night of, it was like, it's the marriage is pretty much over anyway. We've been going in circles for 10 years. Mm. I don't think, I don't know if you had a thought. I don't, I don't think it was as in depth for Ben. Okay. About what you're saying, we're going to get a divorce. Or what your thoughts was afterwards. If you, they were saying, if you, you not you weren't cheating with the thought of oh I'm going to get divorced. No, mm -hmm. I didn't think he I don't, he didn't think it was he wasn't thinking that far ahead like that he wasn't I, I thinking did. like oh I'm gonna cheat because I want to and and to be honest we really didn't we rarely have said divorce like even in our arguments our worst arguments that's maybe come up once or twice when we're like I want a divorce because I think we both knew that we really don't want to be without each other. Even in those moments of intense rage mm -hmm. that we've had, I know that. I mean, I I I can say maybe count on my hand the number of times that I've said, "Oh, I want a divorce," because that's real. And, and to be honest, I mean, like, have I? You said it more than me. <laughs> let's be realistic. Now, let's be realistic. 
I have not. That's not something well, that I've said, been thrown well, out I said, I said, hey, if I'm getting on your nerves too much, right, man, well, hey, I, you want me to split, please let me know. Right, but to actually say, oh, I want a divorce. You mm -hmm. said that more than me. But, I maybe said it once or twice, but no, I haven't. But let's be clear. I have, let's be honest. Have I, how often have I said that to you? Keep it a keeper. <laughs> oh my God. How often have I said that to you, yeah. though? Talk about sheep and a keeper. I heard him. How often have I said that to you, though? Once or twice. I said in it. The, in, exactly, and, and literally in the 18 years we've been married. So, so, I, that's not so, that, so, like, like she, right. so that is something I'm agree with her on, is that that's something that hasn't yeah, been in not... the forefront so much. So to flip this on y'all, I mean, second, that we really that. Like in 2011, Sydney was like around eight. So I wasn't really looking at being a divorced mom. Because let's be clear, I come from a single mom and grandparents who were married. So my thing is, I don't want to be divorced because I don't want to be a single mother. But that's that part of it. That was part reason. of it for me. But that can't uh, be the only reason. No, that ain't the only reason, but that is a that has been a determining factor as to do I want to continue. Now, of course, I'm still in love with him and love him, but also I had to think about my children. Anyone who says that they don't consider their children is a lie, because oh. that is part of it. Okay. Not a main thing. Let me be clear. Yes, it's not okay. a main thing because we're still very much in love with each other. And even at two, in 2011, I was still very much in love with him. So I didn't, but I had to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. it, has, it has motivated me to work harder though having children it has yeah. motivated me not that it's a determining factor but realistically when you're married and you make a decision you know you're putting in all this time and you're raising your children and especially if you come from affected. right a lot of things are affected so that was part of my decision like do i want to leave him now raise sydney do this co-parenting thing do i really want to do that and I had to look at, I had to, I actually wrote out a list. I did it the old-fashioned way. Let me look at the pros. Let me look at the cons. And when I got done with the list, I had to look at, it's more pros to me staying. And definitely, of course, kids and our love for each other. And the, we, we have a friendship. We have a home together. You know, all of these things were on the pros list. And overall, we like to hang with each other. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, that is part of what I say. We are friends. And, and from what I've seen with y'all, it's like y'all still seem like y'all have y'all be in more good places than bad. Oh yeah. So yeah. I mean, and, see, and, and that was my and, 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 and that that's, was that's that's, that's that what makes that's what makes this fight worthwhile. Because when the bad always the good, right. what you gonna do? That's I mean, you're basically right. leaving the the other. This person very little options, very few choices. You leave the other person very few right. choices if the bad outweighs the good. Right. And that's well, what I, 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 because my I thought you were going to be the one to leave. And I'm like, well, when I get to the point where I'm more sad than happy, then I'm leaving. It's just that real cut and, dry. And I'm told of that too. If I ever, if if I'm making your life miserable, hey, but please let me know. I, I don't want to do that to nobody because yeah. I've seen that. I seen that. But Ben, but Ben, I would go back to what I said in the beginning. I look back on like the first three years of our marriage and I was miserable and it had nothing to do with him. You're not getting it. It had everything to do with me. Yes. Healing is a mature, right? Responsibility. So I, yep. I didn't need, so I didn't need marital counseling. I needed individual yep. help. And that's why, and that's part of why, and that's part of when I found out that he was unfaithful, I went to therapy because I was like, I need to learn how to heal me. Me and I knew at that moment, like, yes, I'm blaming him, but I also need to look at how I can move forward for me. Mm -hmm. And that's something that hold on, hold on. That's something that helps as well when you work on yourself. And that's that's the maturity that came with over these past six to seven years. That when I started focusing on myself. My confidence built because I got more into what yeah. I wanted to do with my dream. Yeah. I, it was always there, but I was caught Which up. Which I very much encourage. Yes. A lot of this Rocky's reality, right down to it platform, <laughs> has been watered and sprinkled. Yes, but understand, I, me. I still had that in me when you met me, though. So, I mean, I still had it in me. It was going to happen eventually. You wasn't even sure what you wanted to do. Yes, but because I, was, well, because I was being a wife and mama. 
Shit, when we first got little. together, you wouldn't know. Man. Okay, go ahead, Rocky. Come but on. You knew I wanted to be in radio, though, is my point. But my point is, what I learned is that I had to focus on creating my happiness from, from me, not from him. Right. So when I started focusing on following my dreams and yeah. reading more, praying more, mm -hmm. having more conversations with experienced people, that's when I realized, like, I got to work on changing me. And yeah. then I know I noticed that when he saw that I was doing my thing and changing me, that motivated him to be like, oh, let me get my let me get my shit together. Or she she I realized that yes, I want to be with you. We've done, we've done that for each other, right? Oh, we've done that for each other. When I first when I first met Raquel, she said she graduated from U of M. That's what motivated me to graduate from college. That's what motivated me to graduate from Spanx Howard. And during that, after she graduated, and she she said she wanted to work for the state of Michigan early on. And I was there for like, yeah, yeah. Keep applying with the state. Keep you saying, can I finish, please? It's my turn. My turn. You went on a long tangent. Just answer the question. Yeah, I'm about to go get me a cigarette. <laughs> Go go ahead, Ben. Making me forget what I was saying. With our state of Michigan, yes, we I, we, we yeah, did that absolutely. for each other. Now, pause on us from what I'm hearing with you two, since this is a mutual platform right now. When you saying you basically had to work on yourself, brother Jermaine has been there through that whole time, right? Yeah. And maybe what you didn't know, what you didn't know that you needed. He knew, he knew, mm -hmm. he knew that. And low key in a lot of ways, not even low key, in a lot of ways, you know that too, because you sense that about him. That's why y'all still together. How old is y'all youngest child? Eight. Eight, not to say like he was saying to Raquel, not to say that we in it just for the kids, but the kids are a huge factor. Mm -hmm. And we wanna show them as well, we don't wanna show them the cycle of single parenthood. Because low, I mean, on the real, single parenthood is cool for those who have to do it and they succeed with it. But do they want that? No. Do they want that? No. No, no. They don't. No. No, they don't. no one chooses that. No one wants to raise kids by themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if you no. do, if you want to do that. I mean, yeah, you, have, you have to do it. That's fine. If you have to but do it, you no have to do it. No one wants to choose that life. Yeah, so to be struggling like that. Like I said, this is something we're showing. Our this is a struggle with parents. the parents. This is something we're showing our kids as well. I, I, I'll say too. I, I would always, I always tell people, kids can uh, kids and money too can help you stay together, but they can't keep you together. Yeah, can't keep you right. Together. Like, and, and and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I'm you know, just saying it's it's a it's a factor that, like you said, a lot of people don't want to admit that that is a factor, though. Oh right. yeah, not not saying you no, know, they don't want to admit that that is a factor. Now, it, it's not it's not a it's not the main factor, but I had to admit it was part of my decision because that's the thing about marriage—you have to look at the big picture here, like what all is going into this, and that's why I said I had to look at. For me, it came down to if I'm more sad than I'm happy, I'm out. That's any right. situation. Right. And so I had to look at like, for the most part, we are still happy. Right. And so that's became my obsession with, okay, well, let's work on what's wrong with us. Right. So that we can, can continue to grow from this and still, you know, be in love because that was a big thing for me too not to just be married just to be married right like so, i saw from my grandparents that they still kissed each other they still flirted with each other they still have fun with each other right and that's something that because ben and i have in our marriage that's was part of what has kept us together to be able to yeah be be each other be each other's friends have those moments when we can be vulnerable and cry and just be ugly and just, you know, and sit, you know, just be this person who you didn't imagine you would be, but they still love you. Right. So, so I mean, so it's a number of factors. So we're going to wrap it up. But I guess my final question is, 
what barriers and people have asked this before so this was like an inbox question but what barriers or what walls you know what ramifications did you put in place now so that basically it doesn't happen again how do you like the how do you a fair proof your marriage so that it does not happen again a fair proof mm. a fair proof well, my thing is, I've also learned too. You can't. Um, you gotta trust the other person. Yeah, but God more now. Well, I'm yeah. trusting God more now. Like I, mean, I, I just, I, I just, and I have, and I'm more cognizant to listen to him when he's telling me, like, like I don't appreciate the way you said something. To make sure that I'm more perfect. Like yesterday, maybe when I was trying to say something to you. And you, you didn't. He didn't realize that. Uh, uh, okay, so this is what it was. He had his um his shorts on the floor, and usually I'll be like, "Oh, get this stuff up." You know, I'll be bossy, like get this stuff up, get, get put it in a um hamper or whatever, or the the clothes shoe. And yet, see, and yesterday I was like, "Boo, what you doing with this? Is this dirty?" So now I've learned to ask him a question instead of demanding. Yeah, and seeming like a bossy bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've learned how to to tone it down to, to yeah. the communication, and that's. Be checking myself because I know that part of was what was led up to it. Me being selfish, I was involved with I, my friends. I was the one being selfish. Her flaw is being bossy and controlling. Okay, that's what I mean. I, honestly, that's what it is. Right. That, that's her flaw. You're controlling too, but it's her. okay because you're a man. But we're not even gonna go there. Uh, it's okay for right. men to be controlling. But, but, so how we're affair proofing now? Yeah is me trying to be more cognizant and of only my shit and apologizing when I've been a bitch, when I've been inappropriate. Yeah, because I tell her she's bossy and she's like, I'm not bossy. What are, what are you talking about? I ain't bossy. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I'm I'll be right. uh, yeah, I'm bossy. your mama bossy, yes. your granddaddy yes. bossy, our daughter is bossy. <laughs> uh, but again, unlearning those behaviors and doing those check-ins with him to mm -hmm. say, Hey, what's going on? Yeah, Let, yes, but it's so no, it's not bossy for you, boo, because you're a man. Yeah, it's you're okay. Right. You're right. You know, it's a different thing when men are bossy. Yeah. But and see, we have these battle of the sexes sometimes because he is an alpha male. And see okay, that, that's a totally different zone. That's that's, that's totally right. Different. But so to a fair proof is being proactive, not reactive. If you want to succeed in more, life, more which, sex. This, this, more yes, sex. Yes, definitely. More sex. sex. <laughs> Sex. Instead better. of trying to run out here chasing everything else out here, put it into the person. Experiment, with each, Experiment yeah. with each other. Experiment with each other. Experiment with each other. Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, just be you, having an open conversation. Over too. the last year, over the last year, and we grown, keep it real. Over the last <laughs> year, it seemed like we've had sex at least. Four out of or four or five times a week, at least. That's the so, pandemic. Yeah. pandemic. And then when that's we, for sure. And we were here certain nights. Like, I said, watching reality TV, these crazy ass people's know. out here. This one woman says she ain't had sex in two years. I damn near, I right. damn near it, it, she threw my back out when she said it. I'm like, uh, oh, that's just I said, I yeah, intimacy. Yeah. Two years. But I think just our community. Well, I mean, if you're same. single, if you're single, I guess, yeah, that's a possibility. But, but if you're married, married you know, even, um, even if you boy and girl, you can't say you went to somebody and y'all had sex with me. Right. So, wait, get back to the fair proof. And how do you think yeah, we're fair, fair proof? He said it. Sex. But. More sex. And, uh, I else? mean, communication. Communication. And then a, a mature communication, like like we've been saying, the arguing with each other, like we kids, like we young, that's play. I mean, we all are basically, we all on this part of our life right now. You know yeah. what I mean? So we don't need to be on um, that bullshit, for real. I mean, we're not kids. Like I said, we, if we have to yell at each other for us to get our point across, what are we doing? What are we, and we've we been together 20 years? What are we doing? That's crazy. I mean, for certain things, I don't know. I, I don't even know if we get a pass for certain things. I mean, I still do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know 
But he had you you have I do too and but we have gotten better at saying, okay, let's pipe down. Because it used to be where we would just get into this big drag out fight. And be mad and like you said, be silent for a couple days. A few times I did pack my clothes. Like, hey, I, hey, yeah. this, is, this is crazy. Yeah. Man. And I, and I mean, and I, yeah, feel, you know, I feel like a lot of couples have been through that though. Packing clothes, saying I'm done, I'm out, all of that. But at, but at the same time, people from the outside in will be like, because there are women who believe, well, if you cheat once, you always a cheater. Well, how is that different when it's the woman who cheats? Like, it's easy for us to say that when it's the man, but when it's the woman who cheats, you are you looking at yourself as, well, I cheated once, I can't be forgiven. I'm always a cheater. Well, and I'm going to be honest, this, and this is, this is partly why, because when we were in the midst after it happened, this is partly why I wanted him to get a vasectomy for us not to have any more kids. Because I'm like, I don't want a chance you cheating on me again and impregnating someone. Because I'm not trying to spend my money on no one else. And that was my thinking at the time. Seriously, mind. like, I'm not, not. And that, and that was the thing because I don't, now, now I'm at the spot where I'm like, if it happens, if you do it, that's on you. I, I, I got to the point where I'm no longer afraid to be without him. I had to get to that, that point where I love him, I want to be with him. But I was like, God, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And that was part of why when, after our son was born, I was like, look, now the other piece was, I felt like I'm the one who's been pregnant. I'm the one who's ha was on birth control. I'm the one who had two C-sections. I just felt like sacrifice wise. And ladies, it does still work. It doesn't, nothing. That was a big fight for him. Cause you know, he was scared. His sex wasn't still going to work. It, it, it still works. It still works. But that was part of my thinking to protect me at the time after our the affair had happened. I was like, well, how do I know? Like you said, Tanisha, that this isn't gonna happen again. Right. How do I know that? And then I have to think about the long run. What if it happens again and you impregnate someone? And and for, right? and, and for some people, some people have that story and they still stay. And yeah, so, so it's easy for you to say, no, I'm not helping you if you get this girl pregnant. I'm, then what do you get a divorce like you can say that's your deal breaker but again you haven't got to that point i didn't even want to i didn't even want to get to that point right no. but like i said the part of my reason was too like i felt like as a woman i've sacrificed my body i've been the one who's been on birth patrol i'm the one who's been pregnant i had two c-sections and i felt like it's only right you and it's it, for women it's a surgery for men it's an outpatient for procedure but i was also thinking like this way if he makes the choice again because my thing was it wasn't a mistake if you're doing it again it's a choice the if you make the choice right. again i'm protecting me that mm -hmm. for about three or four years after it i was in self-protective mode i was in the frame of mind like i gotta protect me because he's not gonna do it i gotta trust god because i can't trust him and so i had to get past that point baby coming mm -hmm. in all right go upstairs baby <laughs> he like what? Any last words? We wrapping up. We wrapping up, Ben. Oh yeah. So to a fair proof, it, I would say be mm -hmm. proactive, have mature communication, and be honest with it. Be honest with yourself. That's good. You know, a lot of times people are trying to front for other, and and, and I think that's part of what people admire about us that we're not trying to front. And for like, what? You don't have to. Like it's perfect because people try to front. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, people try to front like everything is hunky dory, and that's part of and, and not addressing issues when it's an issue, not having the hard conversations. I've been too much real stuff to fake. I've been through too much realness in my life to fake. Too much. Right. Too much. Right. But I mean, pushing stuff up under the rug, not discussing it. Not discussing because it got to a point where he would say to me, I don't like when you do this. I don't like when you talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. And it took him saying that to me to be like, you know what? I need to listen and hear what he's saying yeah. to me. He's telling me he's he doesn't done. like it. Do something different. Yeah, do something different. I'm trying. That's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you got a lifetime to do it. But it, and see, that's where we get stuck, though, because it, when you try to show signs of change, he's the type he not going he gonna he gonna stick on it. Just like yesterday when I was trying to. But, be, it, 
But if you want forgiveness, you have to give forgiveness. You have to do that yeah, too. If you want forgiveness, you have to give it. Yeah. Because not it's gonna be a lot of forgiveness throughout the relationship. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah, what she, forgiveness. Yeah, oh, that's what she's taught me. That's what she's taught me. That's what she's taught me. Other stuff that you, you know, when your spouse makes a bad financial decision and it's hurting both of y'all. It's like now we got to figure out how to come together instead of being pissed off at each other. So right. that because when your spouse feels like they can't be, you know, fallible with you, then that makes them, you know, think someone else is giving them that attention. Right. right. And that's, you know, so. Um, well, we, are, we all ain't going to say. Pray. Okay. pray. You need to pray. That's but right. God, That's a right. fair proof, because it really is nothing really any of us can do to control another person. You right. got to pray a lot of times that God just, you know, well, because I've had to pray like, Lord, take this temptation away from me. Take mm -hmm. this desire away from me, because I know this is not, you know, like I said, I've been in close quarters with guys who I could have had an affair with. But mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I pray like, God, you, I, I know this is the devil. I now, remove remove yourself from the situation though. I, I need you to that. take that temptation and that desire. Right. Yeah. You got something okay. I'm sorry. I was saying you 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 still a whole lot of mama for Q. Q actually love fella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rocky Ben. Listen, Rocky, you on the other side of the interview table. I'll be back on with you on Rocky's reality for marriage on cut three in a couple of yes. weeks. <laughs> October 22nd, baby. Yeah. Talk about prospering through the pandemic, which actually, this is the irony we have. You know, three couples that we know have gotten divorced during the wow. pandemic. Three, three couples that we know are either going through a divorce or have gotten divorced yeah. during the pandemic. But we got better. Probably been one of the better times in our relationship, mm -hmm. in our marriage. Yep. Five, times a, five times a week. <laughs> hey, five. But it, yes, it's yeah, seven. Seven, if you're really feeling seven, seven is better than five, <laughs> right? But not, I mean, not even just sex, but our communication, right? Has gotten better though, too. From what I see, we 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 are able to come to each other sooner rather than later, right? And talk about an issue before it blows up. And I've also learned how to just be quiet sometimes and let him do his thing. Believe That's it or not, very hard for her to do. <laughs> All right, Ben and Rocky, I love y'all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Everybody on Facebook Live, y'all have a great. Ain't nobody night. comment. I ain't see no comments or okay. nothing. You're not gonna see it because we on Zoom, so you gotta oh. go back to the Facebook Live on my page. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say I know people have something to say because we yeah, oh yeah, they comment. Right. All right, have a good night. Well, thank you. You're All welcome. right. All right. Bye bye. God bless y'all. Bless you. Bless y'all.